Hello everyone, success series is back with another video and this time we are going to discuss the remaining part of chapter 1, Resources and Development of CBSC and CRT Class 10 Social Studies. Let's see the topic which we are going to cover in this video, Land Resources, Land Utilization, Land Use Patterns in India, Land Degradation and Conservation Measures, Soil as a Resource, Classification of Soil, Soil Erosion and Soil Conservation. Let's get started. First is Land as a Resource. As we have discussed in our previous video, a resource is something which is valuable to humans and satisfy their need. According to that definition, land is definitely a resource. It helps us in the field of agriculture, wildlife support, infrastructure, urbanization, transport, fiber and fuel. Land is a resource but it is not infinite so we must use it judiciously. Therefore land utilization is very very important. Land utilization is judicious use of land with proper management and modification of forest optimum use. Land is utilized in the form of forest, uncultivated land. Uncultivated land is the one which is not used for the purpose of agriculture. Land not available for cultivation, it is of two types, barren, waste land and land put to non-agriculture. First we'll discuss the barren and wasteland. Barren land is the one which doesn't have the potential to support plant growth and the wastelands are those in which plant can grow but they are not utilized yet or they have not been utilized up to their full potential. The second one is land put to non-agriculture use. These are those land which is used for the purpose of infrastructure, urbanization, monuments, bridges, roads, etc. The last and the important one is the fallow land. Fallow land is the one which we leave deliberately and intentionally without any crop for a certain time duration so that it can regain its nutrients and it can regain its organic material and it can regain its fertility back. Fallow land is basically of two types, current fallow and other than current fallow. Current fallow is the land which is left without any cultivation for an year or less. And other than current fallow land is the one which doesn't have any cultivation for more than one year till five years and so on. The last and most important concept of land utilization is net zone area. So the net zone area is the total land of the country on which crops are sown annually. If any land is utilized more than once for growing crop, it is considered only once. The second thing in this is, if the area sown more than once is added to the net zone area of the country, we get the gross cropped area. Let's have a quick glance of land use patterns in India. As India is an agro-based economy, it definitely has a large net zone area of 46%. The forests cover the 23%, 9% is the land put to non-agricultural uses, 6% is barren or unculturable land. Unculturable wasteland is the one which cannot be used for growing crops. 3% is permanent pastures and other grazing land. 1% is the miscellaneous, 4% is culturable wasteland and 8% is fallow land. Culturable wasteland is the one on which crop can be grown but it is not now in use our culturable wasteland. Now let's discuss land degradation. If we use and exploit the land in so many ways then it will be surely be degraded. Land degradation is any change in characteristics of land which reduces its quality or decreases its fertility. How can we rectify land degradation and what causes land degradation? Let's see. The common causes of land degradation are deforestation, overgrazing, some agricultural practices, not all, industrialization, urbanization. Now how can we conserve our land? How to prevent the land degradation? There are various ways in which we can prevent our land from getting degraded like afforestation and proper farming techniques. We'll discuss some of them now. First one is strip farming. Second is crop rotation. Crop rotation we have discussed in the previous video is the technique in which we grow alternate crops on the soil so that it doesn't get deficient in one particular nutrient. Third one is afforestation that is planting more and more trees and supporting forests. Fourth one is ridge and furrow formation which we'll be discuss in next slide. 
Last one is construction of dams to check the water flow. Now what is strip farming? As you can see in the picture, the greener area is the cultivated and the brown one is the one which is uncultivated. So strip farming has alternative strips of cultivated and uncultivated land. This type of farming reduces soil erosion from both water and wind sources. The next is the ridge and furrow formation. You can see in the picture the elevated part is the ridge and the deep part is the furrow. This type of formation of ridge and furrow prevent soil erosion in the land due to water runs during irrigation. Now we'll discuss soil as a resource. What is soil? Soil is very fragile thin top layer of earth crust formed by minerals, particles, organic matters, water, air and living organisms. We can see various layers of soil. The first one is the organic layer. Organic layer basically consists of microorganisms or leaves or debris. Next one is the top soil. It is the most important soil as it is the most fertile soil. It has all the organic matter which supports the plant growth. Next one is the subsoil. Subsoil doesn't have that much of organic matter and doesn't support plant growth. It is light in color and has more of clay. The parent material and the bedrocks consist of rocks of varying sizes. Soil have various functions but we have discussed five major functions of soil here. First one is medium for plant growth as we have discussed earlier. It provides nutrients and water to the plant roots which help the plant to grow. Second one is habitat for soil organisms. Soil support millions of microorganisms and various of organelles on itself like that of earthworm, water supply and purification, engineering medium and last is recycling nutrients and organic wastes. India has different states having different climates and different topographic features. So there is huge variety of soil in India as well. Let's see them. First one is the alluvial soil. The alluvial soil is one of the most fertile soil and generally found around the river banks. Alluvial soil is mainly found in northern plains. The minerals present in alluvial soil are potash, phosphoric acid and lime. Ideal crops for this kind of soils are sugarcane, wheat, cereals and pulse crops. Alluvial soil are broadly classified into two types, bhangar and khatar. The old alluvial soil deposits are called the bhangar soil and the new one are called the khadar. Next one is the black soil. Black soil is made up of volcanic lava and it's ideal for growing cotton. Mainly black soil is found in the track which includes part of Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. The red soil. Red soil got its red color due to high consistency of iron in it. It is made from ancient crystalline metamorphic rocks weathering. Red soil is suitable for food like bajra. And the dark colored red soil is suitable for wheat, pulses, tobacco and javar. Now discuss the yellow soil. The yellow soil got its color from the presence of ferric hydroxide in it. This soil is found in humic subtropical regions. It is acidic in nature and has low humus content and ideal for crops like grapes, essential oil plants, tobacco and vegetables. Arid soil. Arid soil is basically not very good for the purpose of agriculture as it has a very poor water retention. But if you get a very good irrigation to it then it can be used for agriculture of wheat, barley and flax seeds. Lateral soil is rich in aluminium and iron and formed in wet and hot tropical area. It is red in color due to the presence of iron oxides. Laterite soil is formed due to leaching. Leaching is basically loss of minerals and organic solutes from soil due to high temperature and heavy rains. The last one is the forest soil. Forest soils are mainly found in the forest of mountainous areas and hilly where sufficient rain is available. The soil texture varies according to the mountain environment and where they are formed. Now the next thing is the soil erosion. Soil erosion is basically wearing the top soil 
by the action of wind or water. This topsoil is very very fertile and rich in nutrients so it is very important for us to conserve this soil. Soil erosion is basically of three types, the rill erosion, gully erosion and sheet erosion. Rill erosion as you can see in the picture is removal of soil by concentrated water running through the little streamlets. You can see the streamlets here. The second one is the gully erosion. Gully erosion is removal of soil along the drainage lines more than 30 cm like this is quite huge as compared to this by surface run of water and last but not the least is the sheet erosion. Sheet erosion is different from that of gully erosion and rill erosion because erosion does not take place in channels. It takes place in sheet format due to heavy rainfall or due to run of water. Thank you for watching this video. Also see the explanations of chapters of social sciences, sciences and English. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video and we will see you again with another video of social science. Till then, thank you.